What is going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing another QS138 conversion. This time, not on the YZ250. We're going to do it on this little TTR90. Just a quick recap on this bike in case you're new to my channel. This is a 2003 Yamaha TTR90 that I picked up last month. Barely running, all clapped out, beat up plastics, torn up seat, flat tires, surface rust on the frame, fork was all bent. We ended up taking the gas engine out because I wanted a lot more power than that anyway, so I had no intentions of rebuilding it. Stripped this thing down to bare frame, got it refinished gloss black, swing arm refinished gunmetal gray, put new tubes in, reupholstered the seat with marine vinyl, cleaned up the plastics as much as I could and put on a brand new vinyl set, straightened out the fork. Now I'm trying to get some power squeezed into this thing. I'm trying to use a similar setup as the one I have on my YZ, but this QS138 kit is from Electro & Co. That was like 1500. I'm trying to do a budget setup on this. So I'll go over that in a minute, but my goal with this bike is to get it as quick or faster than my KLX, which should be pretty achievable since this thing's gotten pretty close. This is my 72 volt Razor with the Kunray motor and the Kelly controller. But this thing hits 50. So with the parts that I'm using for this bike, I have no doubt that we should hit that. Here's everything that we're gonna be using for this project, starting with the QS motor kit. This is a QS138 V3 with a built-in gear reduction. Same exact thing that we're using on the YZ, except this one came with a 428 sprocket rather than a 520. And then this is a far driver and the 72530 controller and came with a not so plug and play harness, but I'm not mad about it since it came with so many accessories such as this DKD digital gauge display, voltage step down converter so we can add 12 volt accessories such as headlights, horn, turn signals, brake light. It even came with the throttle with the built in switches and the mode switching, horn and whatnot ignition key it even came with a bluetooth dongle so you can connect to the controller for programming purposes and then i just got a new 428 chain by jt since the stock chain was looking really crusty and it seemed like it was going to be a little short for how we're going to mount the motor some m8 by 1.25 hardware since that's the thread pitch on these mounting points and then it's just some aluminum material that we're going to cut up for the motor mounts for the battery, I'm using an Amorge 20 amp hour, 72 volt with a 120 amp peak, which isn't much, but it should be plenty to move this little tiny bike. Unfortunately, it did not come with a charger. So I am just using my five amp 72 volt charger by BTR that I'm using for my Razor. I just made an XT60 adapter so we can use it to charge the Amorge battery for now until we upgrade. And then while we have the bike apart, I'm replacing this blown out stock shock that I had to cut off with one that's over an inch longer and has a heavier duty spring rate. So we can raise the seat height on this bike and make the ride quality more appropriate for a 175 pound adult rider. And then I got all this stuff for less than $1,500. If you are interested in getting more details about the $900 budget QS kit that I'm using, you can check out the unboxing video that I posted about two weeks ago. Just for clarification, the price I mentioned for the kit on the YZ earlier did not include the price of the battery or anything else that was needed. This conversion ended up costing over $3,000, but I needed a lot more power for this bike since it's literally three times the size of this one. And I'm using it for more serious trail riding. Now this one is set up for lighter trails and just fucking around in general. Here's how the rear shock looks installed on there. I had to make some 10 millimeter spacers to get it to fit nice and snug since the factory shock has a much wider collar than the aftermarket one. This is just a universal 110 pit bike 
Shock by TD Pro, but it is hydraulic and it is fully functional. So I forgot I also have to get a longer rear bolt to fully install it since uh, the old one had to get cut off, but we'll see how it rides when the bike's fully put back together. Here's how I'm planning on having the motor mounted on the frame. The distance between the two mounts on this part of the frame are conveniently almost the same exact width as the mount on the motor. I just had to add three washers on each side to get the motor nice and centered to get the front sprocket to line up with the rear. That is the most important part, but the motor almost looks like it belongs there. I just want to rotate it clockwise a little bit to tuck it closer to the frame. So I might have to fabricate some tabs to get the these motor mounts to bolt onto this part of the frame. Let me know what you guys think so far. And as far as mounting the battery, I'm planning on building an aluminum tray that'll just bolt onto the frame. Though I might have to cut off a few tabs to get the battery to tuck as close to the frame as possible. And then I'm going to rotate it so the cables are facing back rather than having it sideways to reduce the chances of these getting caught on a branch on a trail. It also makes it easier to run the cables towards the back of the bike since I'm likely going to have the controller mounted somewhere in this general area. Though it is very tight so I got to figure out where I can make space. Well, I may have spilled quite a bit of gas since I don't think I actually fully drained this fuel tank last time we took it apart. So I'm gonna let the garage air out overnight before we continue working. But if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.